Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Madison Charlton from MLC Tech here and today we are doing a video on memory speeds and how not having XMP or DOCP enabled on your motherboard could be leaving a great level performance out of your gaming experience. Now, what is XMP or DOCP? Now, XMP stands for Extreme Memory Profile if you're on the Intel platform, whereas DOCP stands for Direct Overclocking Profile if you're on AMD. Now, XMP or DOCP is a rated speed from the manufacturer of the RAM 6 that the memory has been rated to stably run at. For example, the base speed of DDR5 is 4800 megatransfers per second, though most RAM kits with an XMP profile are rated from 5800 megatransfers all the way up to 8000 megatransfers a second. The speeds that we are getting out of DDR5 is absolutely incredible. The way a manufacturer determines an XMP profile of a RAM 6 is through a process called binning, where the manufacturer puts each NAND flash through an individual stress test in order to figure out what voltage and frequencies these chips can run at. But that isn't the only factor when it comes to running high memory clocks. The manufacturer can only do so much work. The other half of the job is done on the system side by the CPU's memory controller. For example, AMD traditionally has a much weaker memory controller compared to the likes of Intel 14th gen, where Intel 14th gen is pushing upwards of 8,000 megatransfers a second, whereas AMD is a bit more sensitive due to having a weaker and not having a stable of a memory controller, especially when it comes to AMD X3D. For example, on my 7950 X3D behind me, the highest clock speeds that I get running stable on my platform was 6,000 megatransfers a second. Though in some cases, X3D has been known to push higher memory clocks. It all depends on the silicon lottery of your memory controller. Though on average, AMD caps up at around 6,000 megatransfers a second. Intel usually pushes much higher on average there can be some variation depending on the memory controller and the silicon lottery of your CPU but it's all good saying oh yes higher speeds equals better faster this faster that but how does it actually affect real-world gaming performance well that is what I want to investigate you may have a chip that doesn't either doesn't have XMP or you may forget that XMP even exists and the fact that you have to enable it manually in the BIOS in order to achieve the rated speed of your RAM modules so I wanted to do a video comparing bog standard DDR5 memory clocks to the performance you would get out of an overclocked XMP profile kit. And to do this we're going to take a look at a bunch of different gaming titles from open world RPGs all the way up to competitive FPS shooters. For our testing today we are running an AMD Ryzen 9 7950 X3D CPU paired with a Gigabyte Aorus RTX 4090 Master paired that with 64GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR5 with a latency of CAS 3036. The two speeds we're going to be looking at today is 6000 megatransfers a second compared to 4800 megatransfers a second. The first game and benchmark we're going to be looking at is Cyberpunk 2077 running the latest 2.1 update. The first test we're going to do this game is at 1440p high preset with DLSS set to the quality preset. Looking at our numbers we can see we have an F average FPS of 182.9 at 6000 megatransfers a second whereas if we go over to 48 megatransfers a second we can instantly see a dip down to 174.5 which is a decrease of 4.8%. Which doesn't sound like a great deal at the moment, but when we drop down and look at the 1% and 0.1% lows, the numbers start to tell a different story. But at 1440p, we saw a bit of an anomaly in our results, with the 0.1 lows actually being higher at 4800 megatransfers, opposed to the 6000 megatransfers kit. Jumping up to 4K with Cyberpunk, we can instantly see a much wider gap in our performance figures. While the gap of average FPS isn't too much wider, it is slightly wider with a 5.4 decrease in average performance at 4K when we drop down to 4800 megatransfers a second. But the biggest loss is when we drop down to the 1% and 0.0% lows. We can see that there was a decrease in performance of around 32% when looking at the 0.1% lows, which is pretty significant and we'll explain later why that is very important and actually it's more impactful on performance compared to average FPS. But let's jump over to a different sort of title, that being Baldur's Gate 3, the game of the year. And when looking at average FPS performance figures, it tells a fairly similar story compared to Cyberpunk 2077. 
with the difference in the average FPS being only one. Not 1%, one, one FPS. That being 154.7 FPS all the way down to 153 FPS, which is within margin of error. So truth be told, there isn't much difference when it comes to average FPS when dropping down between memory speeds here. But when we drop down to the 1% instead of 1% lows, that's where the story comes together for this video. In fact, in Baldur's Gate 3, it's an even more significant margin compared to Cyberpunk. Moving on to our next title, that being Starfield. Now, that also tells pretty much a similar story compared to the rest of the titles we've already tested, with the average FPS between each RAM speed being very, very close. That being 116.2 FPS all the way down to 112.4 FPS. That is very close and still within what we class as a margin of error. And of course, looking at performance figures, the same story is yet again to be told when it comes to the 1% and 0.1% lows. As you can tell, a bit of a trend is forming here, which is great for our data results. Now let's move on to a different sort of game, and that being a competitive FPS. And today we're gonna to be checking out Counter-Strike number two. And now we love Counter-Strike 2 when it comes to us benchmarks of all types of hardware, that be it GPUs, CPUs, memories, because Counter-Strike scales so well. You can just chuck any sort of hardware at it. The more you chuck at it, the higher the FPS will go. And it is an absolute great game to test all sorts of hardware configurations. At 1440p, the average FPS tells a very similar story to what we've already seen before, with an average FPS of 367.4. When running this game at 1440p, the average FPS tells a very similar story as to what we've already seen before, and that be it the FPS being within a margin of error, that being 367.4 down to 366.7. And the same story, yet again, is to be said for the 1% lows. The difference is pretty significant, with a decrease in the 0.1% lows of 23.5%, that being 102 FPS down to 83.07. But where the gap really widens in Counter-Strike is when we bump up the resolution to 4K. Now, this breaks a bit of the trend to what we've seen in these other titles. At 4K, the average FPS gap becomes even wider, with an average difference of 6.4% in performance, that being 256 FPS down to 240, and the gap also becomes even wider when we bump up the resolutions. So we can already tell on average, having a memory with a higher clock speed doesn't appear to be too much different in the average FPS when it comes to lower resolutions such as 1080p and 1440p, but the gap becomes a lot more noticeable when you bump up to higher resolutions such as 4K. Now you may be asking to yourself, hang on, that doesn't sound like a lot of performance is actually being lost. On average, you are leaving around 5% of performance when you don't enable XMP in your BIOS or you opt in to buy a cheaper RAM module that is rated at a lower clock speed. Now 5% doesn't sound like a lot of performance, but it can make a big difference, especially if it's free performance and it's only something you need to flick a switch in your BIOS to enable. But where the plot thickens in this video is not in the average FPS. It is when we look at the 1% and 0.1% lows. Now you're probably thinking, why do I care about you know the small amount of low FPS figures? It's not the average figure. It's not going to impact my performance. It's not going to be that noticeable. Well, that is where you would be wrong. The reason why we measure the 1% and 0.1% lows is to determine the frame consistency and how smooth your gameplay experience is going to be. The further the deviation is from the average FPS to the 0.1% lows means that there's going to be much more noticeable frame status and the frame rate is going to fluctuate a lot more. When the variance is a lot smaller between the average and the 1% lows, that means for a much more consistent frame time where you're not going to notice things such as micro stutters and frame drops quite as much. Whereas if the gap between the low and the average is much greater, your gameplay experience is going to be less stable. And in my personal opinion, taking a more consistent frame rate over a higher average one with lots of frame drops and micro stutters is what I would take any day over, you know, high average FPS, but stutter, stutter galore, all these micro stutters, all these frame drops, that's going to detract from your gameplay experience a lot more. So while the gap in overall performance isn't as wide as it once used to be, especially when we used to go from slow DDR3 speeds all the way up to its highest end, and the same could be said for DDR4. Going up to DDR5, the performance that you're losing is not as great. Upgrading to a slightly faster RAM or enabling slightly faster RAM in your BIOS can save 
give you a lot of hiccups further down the line and can mean for a much more smoother and enjoyable gameplay experience. So why it's not going to be a complete make or break experience, I definitely would recommend that you make sure that you have XMP or, or DLCP enabled in your BIOS because you are missing out on free performance if you do not enable it otherwise. And if you are looking into upgrading your RAM in the near future, you're thinking of upgrading your CPU platform and, and your RAM platform, make sure to look into the rate speeds of your platform and CPU platform. Check out what reviewers are saying about the memory controllers. There can be variation in people's results based on what is called the silicon lottery of your memory controller. But read a bunch of reviews and tests of, as there are loads out there on stability of memory clocks and make sure you pick up a kit that is rated and that will run stable on your platform but also that fits within your budget as well. Of course me saying faster speed is better but that can also come at a hit to your bank card as well. Once you step up to 6000 mega transfers and beyond you see a significant price increase from let's say a 52 or 5800 megahertz kit once you go beyond 6000 i notice the prices creep up a lot more and another factor to consider when buying a ram kit is the memory latency that is also another very important number when it comes to the performance of your ram we will do another video explaining the impact of memory timings in the near future but for now yeah take the results away for speeds alone and i hope this has helped inform you when it comes to setting up a new kit of ram or your buying decision further down the line. But if I had to sum this video up, it would be one thing. If you're buying a kit with XMP profile, make sure you enable it in the BIOS, because otherwise I'm going to be very disappointed in you, especially if you're a system integrator, because that is the worst things when a system integrator decides not to enable XMP out of the box. You're paying a professional to build your system, and in a lot of cases they can't even be bothered to fl flick a switch which I can understand if you are a novice PC builder yourself, but if you're paying a professional to do it, there is no excuse and shame on whoever doesn't enable XMP if you're a paid professional. Anyway guys, I have been Madison Charlton from MLC Tech. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and found it entertaining and informative in any way, shape or form. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below. What RAM are you currently using in your system and are you looking to upgrade your RAM in the near future? And yeah, give this video a like if you've enjoyed today and stay subscribed if you would like more content like this in the future. Anyway guys, I have been Madison Charlton, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video review.